NASA says that Voyager 1 has become the first man-made object to reach interstellar space, the cold, dark region between stars, far from the influence of our sun. There are transmissions that clarify mysteries, transmissions that confirm theories, and then there are transmissions that break everything. Transmissions that force scientists to freeze mid-sentence, stare at the monitors in silence, and ask themselves if humanity has just crossed a line it was never meant to cross. Voyager 2, drifting alone through the deep vacuum for more than 46 years, has just sent one of those transmissions. What came through the deep space network this time wasn't like the plasma hums, the solar echoes, or the interstellar shocks we've heard before. This transmission carried patterns, structured, layered, rhythmic pulses, buried inside the faintest whisper of radio energy, traveling more than 12 billion miles through the void. And what's worse, this new signal came after Voyager 2 lost contact for seven months, after NASA realigned the antenna against impossible odds, and after every instrument on board was pushed beyond its original lifespan. It came when Voyager should have been silent. It came from a place where no spacecraft has ever remained stable. It came from a region where even the sun's influence collapses and the galaxy's true environment begins, and the tone of the mission team says it all. Voyager 2 did not just send data, it sent something that feels like a warning, a whisper, or a message from deep space itself. Tonight, we travel from the launch of the twin probes to the moment this new transmission reached Earth, and we uncover why this one fragment of radio energy has left NASA terrified, fascinated, and unable to explain what Voyager 2 has truly encountered. Before we can understand the transmission, we must understand the origin of the machine that sent it, and that origin begins with an alignment so rare that it happens only once every 176 years. Back in 1965, when space exploration was still a dream, more than a discipline, Gary Flandro, a graduate student armed with nothing more than a pencil and an instinct for orbital mechanics, stumbled upon a cosmic configuration that would change human history. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune, the four giants of our solar system, were slowly drifting into a perfect gravitational staircase, a configuration that would allow a spacecraft to leapfrog from one world to the next using their gravity like celestial slingshots. This alignment would compress what should have been a 30-year journey into just 12. And when NASA realized what Flandro had discovered, the agency pivoted its entire strategy and began quietly building two machines that would use this once-in-a-lifetime corridor to escape the solar system entirely. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 were born from that cosmic window built to ride gravity like a ladder, and reach worlds no eyes had ever seen. But what no one understood at the time was that this alignment also placed the Voyager probes onto trajectories that would push them deep into the interstellar medium, into regions where the sun's influence collapses, and only the galaxy's raw environment remains. The same alignment that made the Grand Tour possible also made this transmission possible. Voyager 2 launched on August 20th, 1977, a modest-looking spacecraft wrapped in gold-colored insulation, powered by plutonium heat, and guided by computers that today have less memory than a digital watch. And yet, it became one of the most accomplished explorers in human history. It survived Jupiter's radiation storms. It survived Saturn's rings. It survived the eerie frozen deserts of Uranus. And it became the only spacecraft in history to visit Neptune. Flying past its sapphire atmosphere, and watching the great dark spots swirl beneath blue methane clouds. Along the way, it discovered new moons, rings, volcanoes, nitrogen geysers, extreme winds, and mysteries that astrophysicists still struggle to explain. And then, as its cameras were shut down and its last images were stored on its aging tape recorder, Voyager 2 crossed the boundary where the solar system ends, the heliopause, and entered interstellar space. Since then, it has relied on the deep space network to whisper signals across a distance so immense it takes 18 hours for Voyager's message to reach Earth. But the story doesn't end there. As Voyager 2 drifted deeper, its power began to fade. NASA shut off heaters, switched off instruments, and sacrificed non-critical systems one by one, just to keep the probe alive. Even so, in 2020, the spacecraft fell silent for seven months, vanishing into the void, 
and when NASA finally restored contact, Voyager 2 behaved in a way no one expected. Its data was inconsistent, its orientation inexplicably corrected, and then the first strange anomalies began to show up in its measurements, anomalies that are now resurfacing in the new transmission. Voyager 2 didn't just explore planets, it revealed entire worlds that rewrote science. At Jupiter, it transmitted images of swirling storms and iridescent clouds larger than Earth itself. It watched lightning explode across Jovian nights, and its cameras caught Io erupting with volcanic fire, the first active volcanoes ever seen beyond Earth. At Saturn, it slipped through a gauntlet of icy particles, surviving impacts from ring debris moving at thousands of miles per hour. It flew past Titan and detected an atmosphere thicker than Earth's, hinting at chemical mysteries. Scientists still debate today. Then came Uranus, the coldest and strangest of the giants. Voyager 2 found rings, discovered 10 new moons, observed a tilted magnetic field, and glimpsed a world knocked sideways by ancient cosmic violence. After that came Neptune, with winds screaming at 1,000 mile per hour, storms the size of continents, and Triton, a frozen moon erupting nitrogen geysers five miles high. All of these encounters built a picture of a solar system, alive with violence and complexity. But they also taught NASA something else. The deeper you go, the stranger the physics becomes. And once Voyager 2 crossed the heliopause, everything the spacecraft observed, plasma, magnetic fields, particle density, behaved in ways scientists were not prepared for. Now decades later, those same regions seem connected to the unexpected transmission. Before Voyager's cameras were shut down forever, Carl Sagan convinced NASA to turn Voyager 1 around and capture one last portrait, a mosaic of the inner solar system seen from 3.8 billion miles away. One frame in that mosaic contained our entire world, a tiny speck suspended in a sunbeam, so small it could be mistaken for dust. The pale blue dot, an image that changed philosophy, astronomy, and human identity. After that moment, the voyagers went dark. No more photographs, no more color, only sensors, instruments, and radio signals. Data transmitted in binary across the silence of space. Voyager became blind, but it did not become silent. It continued drifting outward, sending back reports of cosmic rays, magnetic fields, plasma density, and eventually the unmistakable signs of interstellar space. But as the years passed, those reports became more difficult to interpret. Instruments weakened, tape capacity shrank, errors increased. Manuals written in the 1970s became the only lifeline for the mission team. And then, after nearly half a century of travel, Voyager 2 began transmitting something that defied technical explanation. A repeating pattern, a faint structured hum, and measurements that did not match any known behavior of interstellar plasma. At first, it seemed like a glitch. Then it returned. Then it grew stronger. Until finally, in its most recent transmission, something new appeared, something NASA cannot classify. Once Voyager 2 crossed Neptune and drifted into the cold beyond, it approached a region scientists had theorized about for decades but had never directly observed. The heliopause, the outermost boundary of the sun's influence. This is where the solar wind, a constant stream of charged particles, finally collapses under the weight of the interstellar medium. In simple terms, it's the border between our cosmic backyard and everything else. Models predicted a gradual transition, a soft fade, a gentle exchange of plasma flows. But Voyager 2 didn't find something gentle. It found chaos. Pressure waves slammed into the spacecraft. Charged particles surged unpredictably. Magnetic fields twisted in violent, unexpected directions. The density of plasma jumped by a factor NASA did not believe possible. And for the first time in history, humanity tasted the raw, unfiltered environment of interstellar space. But the most disturbing part, the transition didn't behave the same way. Voyager 1 observed years earlier. The boundary was thinner, sharper, more active almost as if something had disturbed it, shifted it, or manipulated it since the first probe crossed. That asymmetry didn't make sense. And now, after the latest transmission, scientists are reconsidering the possibility that Voyager 2 did not simply cross a border. It crossed into something's territory, 
Once Voyager 2 entered pure interstellar plasma, material untouched by the sun for billions of years, NASA assumed it would be quiet out there, a kind of cosmic emptiness. But that assumption shattered almost immediately. Voyager began detecting a hum, a constant low-frequency vibration echoing through the plasma, too steady to be random noise, too controlled to be natural turbulence. It pulsed, it rose and fell, it shifted in ways that suggested an underlying rhythm, almost like a distant engine idling in the dark. This wasn't chaos. It was structured, layered, organized, as if something was humming beneath the cosmic floorboards. And the deeper Voyager 2 traveled, the clearer that human became. Over the years, its frequency drifted, changed, and responded to unknown fluctuations. And now, inside the most recent transmission, that hum shifted dramatically, as if something in the interstellar medium had suddenly awakened, moved, or responded to Voyager's presence. In 2020, communication with Voyager 2 was lost. Not for minutes, not for hours, but for seven long months. NASA blamed it on a misalignment of the Canberra dish in Australia, the only antenna capable of contacting the probe. But that explanation never fully satisfied the mission specialists. The transmission is no longer a mystery. It is a message. And now humanity must decide what happens next. So now the question is, what caused the transmission? Do we try to reach out again? Do we send another signal? Do we wait for another reply? If this discovery shook you as much as it shook NASA's deep space network, don't slip quietly into the night. Subscribe, because what comes next could redefine our understanding of the cosmos. Like this video so that more people understand the weight of what has just happened, and tell me in the comments, do you think this transmission was a greeting, a warning, or the beginning of something far bigger than we are prepared for. And now something beneath our feet pulsing in rhythm with the stars and the shape of the pattern matched the very same triple spiral that Voyager had sent weeks earlier. It wasn't a warning, it was a countdown. In early July 2025, Voyager 2 emitted a series of pulses that coincided exactly with several global network anomalies. But these weren't just data spikes or lag events, they were breaches. Three military-grade encryption systems, one American, one Israeli, and one private European aerospace protocol, suffered simultaneous failures. What linked them? All three had once used communication satellites that briefly relayed telemetry from Voyager during its final Earth-aligned window years ago. The systems had been disconnected from the probe for over a decade, yet now encrypted files stored offline were accessed, duplicated, and overwritten with fragments of the same spiral pattern code. It was clear now, Voyager's signal wasn't static, it was recursive, using old handshakes, archived protocols, and obsolete logic gates to reach back into systems long thought secure. But why overwrite old data unless it was planting something? The idea that Voyager's transmission was injecting a digital seed into our most secure systems quickly turned from speculation to accepted internal theory at multiple intelligence agencies. And the chilling part was this. No one could trace where the seed came from or what it was growing into. As Voyager's frequency continued modulating, teams at MIT and Tokyo University began experimenting with audio translations of the raw signal. What began as white noise eventually produced wave harmonics that displayed patterns eerily similar to biological neural rhythms, those seen in the firing of synapses. More strangely, the signal wasn't consistent. It adapted when played into a closed loop audio system it began mimicking the frequency environment of the room, almost like it was listening, then repeating, then responding. A pattern was forming. Voyager's signal wasn't just data. It behaved more like an organism, a living algorithm able to shift, mimic, and integrate its environment to maintain structure. The final test was shocking. When introduced into a simulation of a neural net trained for pattern recognition, the signal didn't just trigger predictable responses. It rewrote the neural pathways, optimizing them beyond known AI benchmarks. In other words, Voyager had brought back something that thinks. Remember Wilkes Land, the subterranean region in Antarctica emitting neutrino pulses? A joint expedition was finally approved. Using ground-penetrating radar, seismic imaging, and thermal sensors, researchers confirmed the unthinkable. A hollow structure, at least 60 miles wide, buried beneath the ice shelf, 
with geometric boundaries too precise for any natural formation. The most disturbing detail, its outer edges pulsed with low-frequency EM fields, perfectly synchronized with the Voyager signal, despite no cable, satellite, or line-of-sight connection. Inside the thermal cavity, sensors picked up heat signatures that defied explanation, symmetrical, stable, and radiating in Fibonacci intervals, just like the fractal image hidden in Voyager's earlier data burst. And then, deep beneath the ice, microphones captured resonance, a sound not dissimilar to whale song, but metallic, rhythmic, and artificially constrained to a fixed frequency band, the same band Voyager's signal had adopted just 72 hours earlier. Something was under Antarctica, something active, something tuned to Voyager 2. Finally, the most unsettling event occurred not in space, but in Chile. The ALMA ray, a collection of some of the world's most advanced radio telescopes, suddenly went dark for 38 seconds during a routine observation of the Voyager corridor. Not just offline, not just technical failure. It was as if the entire array ceased to exist from the network's point of view. When systems rebooted, logs had been wiped, data drives corrupted, but one piece remained, a fragment, barely 2.7 seconds long, of recorded audio from one of the dish microphones. The audio, when played back, was not cosmic radiation, not a spacecraft ping, but a voice, not speaking, but screaming. Dozens of layers, male, female, childlike, harmonic, screaming in unison, in perfect synchronization with Voyager's transmission. NASA classified the file, but insiders leaked a quote from one of the analysts who heard it. That wasn't a recording, that was a response. We knocked, and something knocked back. We sent Voyager 2 out into the void, as a messenger of peace, as a relic of human curiosity. A symbol of our hope that someone somewhere might find it, understand it, and know we once existed. But now, nearly 50 years later, it's not us reaching into the dark. It's the dark reaching back. The signal we're receiving isn't an echo. It's not a reflection. It's not even communication in the way we understand it. It's an infiltration of systems, of frequencies, of thought itself. It hijacks satellites, infects machines, rewrites algorithms, whispers in resonances buried under ice, pulses from stars that should remain still, and activates golden records that were never meant to power anything. But the truth is even more disturbing, because maybe Voyager didn't find something. Maybe it was always meant to deliver something, not from us, but to us. A message seated in the stars, waiting for us to be advanced enough to understand it, or arrogant enough to ignore the warning. And now that we've decoded the spirals, realigned the signals, and heard the scream from across the coldest voids, we have only one question left. Did we just receive a message from the future, or did we activate something that was never supposed to wake up? Whatever the answer is, Voyager 2 just turned back, and what it brought with it is no longer out there. It's already here. Subscribe for more content like this.